Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we will have the Pledge of Allegiance led by our student uh, board member, Darlene Tith from Sato. Please, please your right hands over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Darlene. Uh, we welcome those who are here for purposes of addressing the board at the proper time and in any order of their request. For those who have not already submitted a request, we have provided forms in the back of the room and also have additional copies here in the front at the Assistant Secretary's position. If you wish to speak during the meeting, please fill out a form indicating your name and the agenda item you wish to address. You may also make a request to give testimony on an item not listed for discussion today. However, full discussion on any items not listed on the agenda will have to be delayed until such time as the item can be publicly posted in advance of the regular agenda item. If you wish to ask questions, please address them to the chair and not to individual members of the board or to the staff. Folks, bear with me. I'm battling a little bit of bronchitis here, so we're going to try to make this meeting as quick as possible. <laughs> The board has been meeting in closed session regarding matters listed on today's closed session agenda and wishes to report that no reportable actions were taken. Beg your pardon? Oh, should take taken this one out. Skip that last one. Public hearings, there's none. Call for agenda items for separate action. Adoption of the agenda is posted. <coughs> Move approval. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion is approved unanimously. Um, public hearing, we have none. We already got that one. Um, we are on approval of minutes. Move mm -hmm. approval. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The motion is approved unanimously. We are now at communications, and our first order of business is recognition of retiree. And Megan Kerr will, will Megan, would you please? Actually, Mr. Meyer has Oh, Mr. Meyer has it. Okay. John? Thank you very much. It's with great pleasure that I recognize Donna Ruggles. Will you please come forward, Donna? Whereas Donna Ruggles is retiring after 35 years of dedicated service to the students of the Long Beach Unified School District, where she served the students of the district as a teacher at Lincoln and Fremont Schools, and where she is knowledgeable and student-focused educator who has always worked to give every student excellent instruction and to provide conditions conducive to their full success, and where she's made school a meaningful and motivating experience for her students as she continually adjusted and adapted her teaching to meet their individual needs, and whereas she's been an active participant in staff development, was always eager to share her expertise with colleagues and her energetic, efficient, and organized assistance helped to improve learning for students in classrooms and beyond. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Long Beach Unified School District commends and expresses deep gratitude to Donna Ruggles for her significant and lasting contributions to the education of thousands of students.
um, let's have a little kiss goodbye for everybody. So go ahead and please hear the oh, so <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I was a kindergarten teacher at the <laughs> See if I can get through this. I need my tissue out early. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the board for their time, efforts, and all they do for the students and employees of the Long Beach Unified School District, and especially for celebrating my retirement with me, as well as if there's any other teachers here today that are retiring. Um, I'm truly honored to have John Meyer recognize my service. He's been a phenomenal educator principal, school board member. He's always been one of the most respected people in the Long Beach community. Um, I've even sought his advice on many, many different situations and he's been a big help to me. I used to teach with his wife, uh, Sylvia, and I'm honored now to call them both my friends. So I wanted to introduce my dad is here tonight, Don Kay. Mm -hmm. oh, stand up there, you that there. Best role model I could have ever had. And um, by the way, he went to Long Beach Poly and graduated in 1945. <laughs> uh, let's see, I also wanted to introduce Camille Wilson came with me tonight. I taught with her at Lincoln Elementary School when I first started teaching in 1982. Big help to me when I first started. Maggie Hempill is also here. She teaches at Muir. It's her last year, and she'll be retired. I was lucky enough to be her daughter's uh, kindergarten teacher at Fremont, who is um, she's talented, creative, and she's almost 28 now. And then Lisa Dempsey's also here. I taught her daughter in kindergarten, and now is in eighth grade. And she still would come and help me, the, even every year after her daughter had, had even left my classroom. I was very thankful for that. Okay, let's see. Um, um, yes, I've taught in the district many years. Before that, I was an aide at Franklin um, Junior High, and that was back when they had ninth grade with the seventh and eighth graders. I also uh, was an aide at Willard, and I coached badminton at Millican High School for six years. Um, throughout my career, I worked with eight different principals. Some were better than others. <laughs> um, a great number of inspirational teachers who shared their expertise and made me a better teacher. Many indispensable office and support staff, six student teachers, a considerable amount of college students, and countless families that I will forever treasure. My daddy always told me to discover something you love to do and find a way to get paid for it. As far back as I can remember, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. I had no idea my pay would be so priceless. I could go on and on about the intrinsic rewards I've been blessed with, but just to name a few. How many people have a profession where they get paid in hugs, smiles, laughs, and sincere love every day? The appreciation of parents always warms my heart. They have no idea how grateful I am that they have shared and entrusted their children with me. I have been given the opportunity to make kids excited about learning and school fun. I have been able to nurture little ones from barely talking to a place where they are confident in presenting in front of the class. On the other hand, I've helped some outgoing students learn a little bit of self-control, and a big part of that was for my personal sanity. <laughs> I've gotten to develop problem-solving skills and see young kids work together toward a common goal. All teachers have many stories to tell. I'd like to take a little opportunity and share just a couple quick ones with you. They're all very different. Please remember the name Emmett Aquino. Even though he just now started third grade, without a doubt he will do something amazing in the future. Finding how to challenge him was difficult, but through much investigation, I learned he could take classes at Cerritos College. I'm thankful that our third grade gifted teacher welcomed him to her STEM lessons then. We didn't have the A, it's now STEAM, um, for the engineering lessons. And Emmett would return and enthusiastically tell us about his experiences. He did independent studies and was willing to do research on any topic. Honestly, he began kindergarten knowing more about many different subjects than I did and asked me questions I didn't have the answers to. In the end, it was so rewarding to see that even though he came in with a great deal of knowledge and curiosity, he still enjoyed kindergarten and made progress academically, socially, and emotionally. 
On the other hand, I had a little girl whose parents had both been in and out of rehab, and the family had even been homeless. She was the second of four children. Through the assistance league, we were able to get them clothing, school supplies, and make their holidays happier. Obviously, my student didn't have very many readiness skills. Toward the end of the year, she still didn't know all her letter names or her letter sounds. To get her thought on, thoughts on paper, she would scribble and write a, f a few random letters. I could not have been prouder when she excitedly read her story, and it contained all the elements of a good paragraph. She had an opening, a closing, details, transitions, and even adjectives before nouns. No one could have deciphered it off her paper, but she had learned a great deal and created a masterpiece. We all celebrated. One more story I'd like to share. Sorry, this is going to be the toughest. It's about a former student who was a true hero. On July 7, 2014, Green Beret Joseph Lowry took a bullet to the head while serving in Afghanistan. The doctor said it was unlikely he would live, and if he did, he would be in a vegetative state. After spending months in the Walter Reed Medical Center, he lived in a rehab hospital in Pomona for almost two years. His mom was living in Hawaii, and his siblings were scattered throughout North America. I was the lucky one who was able to visit and witness the miraculous progress he was making. Joe endured many surgeries and spent most of his waking hours at doing therapy. I was and continue to be inspired by his positive attitude and tremendous work ethic. He is persevering and can walk short distances, but is in a wheelchair much of the time. His goal is to run a marathon, and when he does, I will be there rooting him on. He is now back home with his wife and four kids, living in Ontario. The twinkle in his eye had gone dark for a while, but is back and shining brighter than ever. I have three sons. They've all met him. Almost four years ago, when my oldest son, Danny, decided to join the Army, we visited Joe. Danny has now been deployed twice and is stationed in Texas. Whenever he gets to come home, seeing Joe is a priority. I just watch, smile, and marvel at their close friendship, fun, and camaraderie between them. I have learned way more from Joe than he could ever have learned from me. I will miss seeing former students of all ages when they would come to visit. There is nothing more rewarding than when these kids return and we reminisce about our time together. Honestly, their, fo their fondest memories rarely have to do anything with academics. They are more about experiences and how they felt being in my class. One more quick story, almost done. The year I taught fifth grade, which was when sixth grade was still in elementary school, I had a boy who, who struggled academically. When he was a student at Long Beach City College, though, he and his mom came back for a visit. They told me his desire to do better at school changed when he was in my class. Our district used to do what was known as the mini marathon. It was a mile run for students and it took place downtown. I had my class do a bit of training and I showed up for it early on a Saturday morning. Paul won a medal and he won the motivation to do better at school. He went on to Rogers and worked hard to keep his grades up to be eligible for the track and field team. He continued through high school. He, he was competing in the state finals for Long Beach City College. Unfortunately, a few years later, we don't have the, we didn't, our, the mini marathon became a thing of the past. Anyway, I'm still looking forward to being a guest at many high school and college graduations, along with their parties, attending sporting events, sporting and other events of previous students, perhaps being invited to a few weddings, and certainly continuing the friendship I have with so many students and their family members. Again, thank you for this recognition and the opportunity to speak. I appreciate it, as well as all the people who took out time out of their day and drove all the way up here to support me. I'm truly blessed. Thank you. Thanks to our retiree. <laughs> and uh, for our retiree, we just want to say thank you for your wonderful years of service and all your contributions to our students at Long Beach Unified School District. If you want to take this opportunity now to go out and celebrate with your friends and family, or you can stay with us for a board meeting. That's, that's your choice. I think we're gonna go to the first All right. <laughs> that's great. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> okay. We are um, now at our presentation, Long Beach Yukashi Sister City Association 
I'd like to call up Jeanette Shalin. School Board District and everyone here tonight. Uh, as a representative of our sister city in Japan, which is Yokaichi, the oldest uh, of Long Beach's sister cities, we're here today to share some information about two of the programs that we partner with LBUSD on. And to help us do that, I'd like to introduce our new president, Laura Plantenga. Thank you, and thank you for allowing us this honor tonight. Uh, we're very proud of our association, and uh, we're all very proud Long Beach residents. Um, it is our honor to update you on this, our 56th year of our relationship with the sister city of Yokaichi, Japan. And tonight, we do have one of our youth leadership programs with us, and they are thrilled to share their experiences that they had this summer. It is my pleasure now to introduce Midori Sanchez, who's an English teacher at Millican High School, who chaperoned our Environmental Summit program. Good evening. Um, so I'm going to call up my um, students that I had the pleasure of chaperoning, and then they can introduce themselves and we'll get this presentation started. Um, but as they're walking up, so yes, I teach at Millican, and three of our students also were from Millican, and we have one student from McBride. So I'm going to go ahead and call up our students. Hi, I'm Julia Campbell. I'm a senior at Millican High School. Hi, I'm Raquel Gass. I'm a sophomore at Millican High School. Hello, I'm Anthony Valdespino, and I'm a sophomore at McBride High School. So a big part of the environmental summit was going, not only going to Japan and learning how they've been environmentally um, monumental, but bringing back that knowledge and applying it to our own community. And to do that, we needed to learn the history of Long Beach. And we learned that it, was, uh, it used to be a very polluted city, among other things. However, now, um, environmentally, we have changed and improved um, and become a cleaner city. Um, and a cleaner community, um, but there's always room for improvement. And so through programs like ours, we can bring more aware awareness to the issues that are affecting um, us, not only locally, but globally, and lead um, Long Beach to a happier community and happier residents. When we went to Yokaichi City, ways in which they're trying to become a, have a healthier environment was first, how to dispose of garbage. In America, we have the trash and we have recycled. But over there, we noticed that they had um, a wide variety of them. They had bins for paper, they had bins for cardboard, cans. And this, we realized, was a good way of them to realize of how to dispose of things in the right way so things wouldn't be going into um, undesignated un uh, areas. And also, their education system is also enforcing the use of learning about the environment as well, specifically the practices such as food loss reduction, where they would only buy a certain amount of what they need, so they wouldn't be producing more household garbage, which has become a big factor in the garbage problem within our world. And so we see that their idea of reducing being more important in recycling is also important in the sense of making sure that we don't produce as much garbage rather than recycling and having it come around to us. So the whole point of the program that we went to in Yokaichi was to learn about a recycling society. And through the different lectures that we learned there and the different places that we went to, we, there was all based around a recycling society and how we can bring it back to Long Beach and be the future that Yokaichi has already had established in their city. Also, this was an amazing experience that we've all like were a part of, and it was really amazing to build a connection through similar interests in the environment and build international friendships with people from China and people from Jap Japan. So 
So we're very excited because now that we've come back and we have this newfound knowledge, some of the things that we want to work on now is like what's, what are next steps. So one of the things that we want to work with is um, working with the Port of Long Beach is a big priority. Uh, we also want to integrate um, studies from the LBJCC, the Long Beach Japanese Cultural Center. I think it would be incredible for them to get a little bit more background too before they even leave. Um, also, we want to work with SURF as well, the Southeast Resource Facil Recovery Facility. And then we have two schools that are being represented, and I'm a teacher at one of those schools. So we really hope that this is going to be a future partnership where we can all work together and continue that relationship with other students on campus. And then finally, um, we just really want to get some check-ins going with the Long Beach Sister City, and um, we also want to work with Cal State Long Beach. So a recent development is that Cal State Long Beach Office of Sustainability, there's going to be a partnership that they're very interested in. We see this as a great opportunity for Long Beach Unified School District students to kind of have almost like a mentorship with college students. So that's something that we're very excited about. We wanted to tell you too that uh, we have some gifts, or omiyagi they would say, that we wanted to give to the board members as well. So we'll just be passing that out. Is that Professor Lily, Lily House Very Peters that you're working with at Cal State Long Beach? Japan. Oh, that's lovely. Jeanette can you pay your that own way. She's actually at Cal State Long Beach. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So. How much was it? Um, I had the pleasure of working on the President's Task Force okay. for Sustainability okay. uh, with many of the faculty okay. like her. And uh, we're in the process of setting up a Presidential Commission on Sustainability. Um, and over the last 10 years, I've partnered with the Office of Sustainability to produce the, the largest sustainability event in the city, and it's held at the Japanese Garden. So thank you for your time and attention on this program. And then I'd like to invite Laura to come back up and just share a, a few pieces of information about our other program, which is the, the TRIO Cultural Exchange. Thank you, Jeanette. Yes, yeah, so this is one of five programs that we support and one of two youth leadership programs that we support. And the TRIO program, while they uh, could not be here tonight, is an exchange program um, wherein one year we send one teacher and two students to the city of Yokaichi, and in the following year they do the same reciprocally. Um, we also have programs with Cal State Long Beach wherein we send teachers to Yokaichi to help teach English for stints of three years at a time. We have a doctor program where the doctors of Yokaichi come to Memorial Hospital. And we have a nurses program where the, those nurses come to Cal State Long Beach to the international school there to learn medical English. Um, as an educator myself, I'd like to thank all of you for your support. Um, I think we all know as educators the importance of global relationships and the impact that has on the students who participate. We thank you also for your continued support of this program. We would be honored if the board would consider assisting us with a financial contribution to assist our teacher chaperones, as currently they assume 50% of the cost of their airfare in addition to their time and their talent in keeping these programs going. However, either way, once again, thank you very, very much for your support of our program and the city of Long Beach. Thank you. Before you leave the podium, let me just ask you, my fellow board members may have questions that they want to direct towards you. Absolutely. If I may, I'd like to applaud the program. I think it's been a fabulous program. And I ask if you please uh, send me a letter and let me know specifically what the board can do to support this program. I heard the money is an issue. I talked with one of the young ladies. She said it was $1,000 just for transportation to, to get over there and back. And that's it's just such a worthwhile portion. program, you know. We need to find a way, I think, to uh, sustain this program and, and keep it going in a healthy way. I Thank am you. happy to send that letter. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Just uh, at, the, at the dinner, I was really impressed in listening to the presentation by the students. And at one point I asked someone, are they teachers or are they just really students? Because the presentations were, were done so well. But just to commend the, the, the students, student participants. And they always, uh, for all the years that we've been 
going to the presentations a number of years, I, I've never attended one where I was not impressed with the outcome. So thank you all for coming today just to talk about your work and how exciting all that work is for you and uh, for us as well. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions I can answer? Thank you all very much. And we, we know we'll see you again. <laughs> Thank you. We have a presentation on National Voter Registration Day. Um, our speaker is Monique De La Garza. Uh, good evening, Board President Williams, Vice President Benitez, and board members. My name is Monique De La Garza. I'm the Long Beach City Clerk. I'm here today with my assistant city clerk, Allison Bunma, and we want to recognize National Voter Registration Day on Tuesday, September 24th. We hope this year will be our most successful year yet with the help and enthusiasm of the students and faculty of LBUSD. A little bit of history about National Voter Registration Day. It's a national holiday celebrating democracy held on the fourth Tuesday of September, first observed in 2012. I encourage the board to recognize this holiday and encourage staff members, administrators, teachers, and students to register and pre-register to vote. I have a proclamation here that I can read if you would like. I'd like to be respectful of your time as somebody who also spends a lot of time at meetings. Um, I understand how, how long these can go, so if you'd like, I can read the proclamation. Okay, proclamation in support of National Voter Registration Day. Whereas National Voter Registration Day was first observed in 2012 and is now considered a national holiday, and whereas every year millions of Americans find themselves unable to vote because they miss the deadline to register, fail to update their registration, or are unsure how to register, and whereas the 18 to 25 voting age block comprised only 12.77% of all voting blocks registered to vote in Los Angeles County and is the voting block with the least voters according to the Secretary of State report as of October 22, 2018. And whereas National Voter Registration Day seeks to create broad awareness of voter registration opportunities to reach tens of thousands of voters who may not register otherwise, and whereas the Office of the City Clerk has partnered with our local education institutions, such as Long Beach Unified School District, Long Beach City College, Cal State Long Beach, and sponsors such as Long Beach Mayor Robert Garcia and the Water Replenishment District, and whereas National Voter Registration Day will provide an opportunity to conduct outreach and education for students in Long Beach area to learn how to register to vote, sign up for election reminders, check their voter registration status online, opt to receive their ballot by mail, learn about vote centers, and more. And whereas National Voter Registration Day is a nonpartisan day of civic unity for a common purpose to celebrate democracy and the voting rights we all share as American citizens, and whereas every eligible citizen should have the opportunity to cast a ballot. Now, therefore, it be resolved that we, the Office of the City Clerk from the City of Long Beach, recognize Long Beach Unified School District Long Beach City College and Cal State Long Beach National Voter Registration Day partners on the fourth Tuesday of each September and commit to embracing local efforts to engage our students in future elections. Hmm? Oh yeah, I can present the, the proclamation. And lastly, I'd like to remind the community that you can register or pre-register to vote online at registertovote.ca.gov and be sure to follow us on Tuesday, National Voter Registration Day, to see what's going on at all the local high schools. Um, hopefully, we'll get a lot of good pictures with the mascots and with the students and get really engaged on that day and get a lot of people to register and pre-register. Um, thank you. If you have any questions, we're here to answer them. Thank you so much for that presentation. We do have some questions. Excellent. Uh, I think I do have one. You clarified it. We are still accommodating voter registration on our high school campuses. Yes. Very good, thank you. Yes, and we will be um, hopefully registering and pre-registering now that the law has changed that 16-year-olds can pre-register so that when they turn 18, they have the information and are ready to start voting. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I'm also checking out the city clerk's website uh, right now. Related <laughs> to uh, Mr. Meyer's question, um, so can you talk a little bit more about what we are doing right now in partnership uh, with 
the city clerk's office as a district and what we could be doing more of potentially? Um, well, we've got a great support from the majority of the high schools in Long Beach. So the student body is actually embracing National Voter Registration Day and they're going to be holding registration drives on campus. Tuesday is a half day, so some of the campuses are having events, um, pep rallies mm -hmm. in their, their quads. And so a lot of the sporting teams and the student bodies are, again, having the voter registration drives. Um, we're, we're going to be working at Cabrillo High School on Wednesday, actually, to go out and talk to different classrooms. And um, it is after National Voter Registration Day, but it's, it's part of the same outreach program. So we'll be at that school. But I think almost every big um, or almost every high school in Long Beach is participating. We've given them packets of registration cards, posters, uh, media kits so that they can start posting on social media and really start educating and outreaching to their students. You know, social media is is the new wave, so we've en engaged them and empowered them by giving them a social uh, media kit. Mr. Superintendent, how do we um, quantify, like, you know, how many students end up registering through our schools? We actually capture that information, okay. so we give voter registrations to the schools and we'll collect them at the end and count them. Okay. So. Hopefully there'll be a little bit of a competition between the high schools to up the voter registration. We're trying to get the mascots involved so that we can, at the end, uh, come back with some pretty positive results and give the schools an opportunity to brag a little bit about how well they've done on National Voter Registration Day. You beat me to it, because I was gonna, and I'm gonna interrupt our superintendent here, I was gonna ask if there was any incentive that we could provide we have uh, our schools. As a system giving an incentives, but Jordan, I'll tell you, has already tweeted it out uh, several times. Okay. So. so, and Mr. Superintendent, I know our social media's uh, game is picking up a bit, so I would hope that we would mm -hmm. use that media kit from the district office as well on all of our sites, so it's not just the high schools, but right. that as a, as a system that we're, we're working that angle as well. That'd be fantastic. I think I heard you say that you're getting support from a majority of our high schools. Yes. I would like to hear that we're getting support from all of our high schools. Well, hopefully by Tuesday I can give you that report that all of them are now participating. I see Dr. Camarillo sitting in the front row, so he heard me also. Thank you. Thank you for coming out tonight. Yeah, You're welcome. Other questions? I'm going to ask my question again. Any way we can incentivize any of our... Uh, our, our, our it may be too late this year, but okay. we can look in the future. Okay. Great. Again, thank you. thank you so much, thank you so Monique, much. for thank you. the presentation. Much appreciated. Okay, um, we are at public testimony on items listed on the agenda. I don't have any request. Um, uh, staff report, there is none. Public testimony on items not listed on the agenda. I do have two requests. Karen Taylor. I think we might be the same request. <coughs> Here. Okay. Here. Hello and thank you. I am Holland Brown. And I'm Karen Taylor. Kathy Perfecio. And we are here to introduce ourselves officially to you as Ground Education. Um, I, but I want to start by saying we are super proud to be LBUSD. Um, first and foremost, as parents of current and uh, past uh, LB, um, students in the district. And also as the creators of our um, innovative uh, garden education program. And we are now working with schools in almost every district. I don't think we have any schools in District 5 yet. We're still working on um, District 5. Uh, but we have uh, a program that runs the entire school year. It's for every kid at the school. And they come out monthly. and. They work in the garden with us as educators, and it's an extension of their classroom and uh, grade level learning. So we get kids working with their hands and their heads in the dirt while they're thinking together about classroom concepts and connecting with nature in a real and impactful way. Uh, we've been doing it for about 12 years. The first eight entirely as volunteers uh, at one site, Lowell Elementary, where we incubated this program um, along with teachers and staff there. And for the past four years, we've been expanding. We became a nonprofit so we could start to fundraise to get our program into more schools. So this year, um, we're working at 10 
LBUSD school sites. We have 12 sites total because we also work with Precious Lamb Preschool, and we have an urban farm at uh, the Boys and Girls Club on Del Amo and Atlantic. So when you add all that together, it's 5,000 kids um, that we're working with this year. Well, and everything she just said, I'm Karen <laughs> Taylor, and we're just, we're proud to be able to um, have this program valued by teachers and students alike. Students are really sort of our strongest ambassadors. In fact, I see some people here who might even have kids in the program. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm actually fourth generation Long Beach. My, uh, my, my, child, my youngest just went to Wilson this year, and so I feel especially thankful and proud that I'm able to give back to the community and that we're working together, again, to see all students at every grade level. Um, what we teach builds every year, and it's different every year, so as they come out, they're thinking and learning and again as Holland said we're, we're forever changing and adapting to next generation science standards which we found really applicable to the things we're doing and the kids are doing out in the garden so we're keeping current and again you know everyone seems to benefit from from connecting with nature and considering some of the you know global issues and things that are going to need to be problem solved by our next generation we really find nature has a lot of answers um, if we can look to it so Anyway, in the interest of time, we just want to say thank you, and does anyone has any questions for us? <laughs> yeah, we'd love to meet with you individually at some point and, get, and talk to you about the schools in your district and get any feedback you have from the schools we currently work with or talk about uh, future sites. Yeah, right now we're, we're expanding at about one to two schools a year as funding and um, time permits. So we would love, we left our information with you. We also have social media, so you can check us out on <laughs> groundeducation.org or Instagram at groundeducation if you want to um, yeah. see what we do. Yeah, we're, 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 we're established with Cal State Long Beach and um, as an intern, um, they can come to us as interns. They earn college credit for spending time for the semester with us and teaching the students in the garden. Um, so they're the ones that got us up on social media. We have to <laughs> fully admit that was their Yay, um, interns. yeah, right. Their their young perspective on things. But you can follow us, yeah, if you'd like to. Yes. Well, we certainly thank you for your presentation. Thank Questions? You. I, I can certainly vouch for at least one second grader. That a brief comment, no question. A brief comment, Brent. Okay, I'll keep it to less than five sentences. I can vouch for at least one second grader that does recognize uh, Ms. Taylor at different parts of our city because of the <laughs> wonderful experience she's had with the community garden at her school. Thank you. I'd second that, and Karen, call me and let me know what I can do to help. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mark. You know, uh, right, it people. just brings back a, a lot of memories of, of uh, middle school for me and having an opportunity to go out and do exactly what you're saying and being able to water the, 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 you know, the, yeah. the things that we planted and, and also be able to uh, take care of it and, and, and as it ripened, we were able to, sure. you know. Oh, yeah. Lots so of eating and tasting. I'm, I'm, yeah. glad, I'm glad that uh, some things don't die out. I'm really glad <laughs> to hear that. Thank you so much for of your course. presentation. Thank, Thank you all. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. All right. We are now at business items, personnel, Mr. Meyer. Thank you, Dr. Williams. I present the following proposed actions prepared by the Deputy Superintendent Education Services, approved and recommended by the superintendent. Classified and exempt personnel. Appointments, 50. Leaves of absence, 11. Suspension without pay, 1. Abandonment of position, 1. Resignations, 33. Retirements, 9. Certificated personnel appointments, 27. In-service changes, 20. Leaves of absence, one. Separations, deceased, two. Retirements, one. And I move approval. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The motion is approved unanimously. Instruction? I move to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? <clears throat> The motion is approved unanimously. Finance Report A. Move approval. Second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The motion is approved unanimously. Finance Report B. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Yes, Mr. Chair, I recuse myself from participation in Finance Report B on the consent <coughs> calendar. I have a potential financial interest under Government Code 1091 and 87100. My husband works for a subcontractor who has done work for the payees. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 
abstentions. It, the the uh, item is approved uh, for, 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 four, zero one. four, zero, one abstention. Business department report. Move approval. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The report is approved unanimously. Purchasing and contract report A. Move approval. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Approved unanimously. Purchasing and contract report B. Move approval. Second. Discussion? Yes, Mr. President, I recuse myself from participation in purchasing contract report B on the consent calendar. I have a potential financial interest under government code 1091 and 87100. My husband works for a subcontractor who's done work for the payees. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Abstentions? The item is approved four votes and one abstention. Unfinished business? There is none. New business? Initial successor bargaining proposals from the Teachers Association of Long Beach, K-12 and CDC Head Start to the Long Beach Unified School District. It's an information item. Mm -hmm. Initial bargaining proposals from the Long Beach Unified School District to the Teachers Association of Long Beach, K-12 and CDC Head Start, and that is also an information item. <coughs> um, resolution 091819-A, Ordering a government board member primary election, setting forth the specifications of the election order, and requesting consolidation of such elections with the primary nominating municipal elections to be held on March 3rd, 2020, in the city of Long Beach. And could I have Brent come up and just add a, a little background to that? <laughs> uh, sure, Mr. President, members of the board. Um, this is a, a, a resolution which you would typically adopt at this time of the year, uh, asking that the um, city's elections and that the district's elections be consolidated. The um, sw uh, change from this year to prior years is that this year you're asking the city then to ask the county to then run the elections and to, uh, and to consolidate those. And this is a procedure that we've worked out with Charlie Parkins' office. Okay. Questions? Uh, yes, um, and we had this conversation before. I, I think it <laughs> would be important for us to put um, an agenda item on a future board meeting regarding our own board uh, reorg and terms of and how our terms in our current uh, board positions um, get resolved. Given that, um, indeed, you know, we 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 went up those endless staircases a couple times. Yeah, and we're, we're working on some of those issues right now with the city, yeah, with, with Charlie Parkins' office. Um, we're doing additional research, so okay. that will definitely need to come before you in a future date. Okay. We have a motion. I move approval on this item. Second. Second. Further discussion? Uh, if I may, Brent, the election will take place in March. Yes, sir. The primary. Uh, the runoff in November. If no runoff is necessary, yet that new board member, for example, replacing Felton and I, would not be seated until December. Right. Is that my correct understanding? That's correct. Thank you. Um, I have a question about the cost. How does this impact the cost um, for the district towards the election? You know, that's, um, I don't know that I have the numbers. Somebody else in the room might have the numbers. By, by consolidating those elections, we, we do achieve some, um, you know, some additional economic efficiencies. Um, I don't know whether or not it's going to be more expensive through the county than it was in the past through the city. We are anticipating that it to cost more than the cities. So an increase of cost. Correct. We are anticipating, and we'll get that to you, but um, in past elections, the county um, has been more than the city. So, so we are expecting the cost to be more, and we're, we're required to do this as part of the new process. So. Right. Brent, can you elaborate on John's question? I mean, the lag time 
if a board member wins outright in the primary and that person has to wait to be seated in November? I, I'd have to go back and take a look at the city's resolution again, but that was, uh, what he stated was my memory as well. Yep, okay, it is. And that's, that's one of the things that I think would be good to address, either in a future charter amendment uh, or in a future city resolution. And again, we're talking about that with the city. Right, we, we are in discussions with, that, that has to be changed by city charter, but currently for this election cycle in 2020, if one won in March, they would not be seated until the second December. meeting in December. And Long Beach City College is in the same position? No, Long Beach City is totally different. They totally have a different is system. That right? Correct. They used to be on the same cycle. But it has been changed years ago. Okay. So we're different. So we're, as Brent said, we're working with the city um, and um, Mr. Parkin to look at a future potential um, charter amendment that would go to the voters, but that couldn't go to the voters until November of 2020. Okay. Brent, for, I, for discussion. Oh, um, I know that I was somewhere with some other council members from a different city over the weekend, and they had a conversation about potentially, the city was in conversation with the county about moving the local piece to the front of the ballot so that the local city elections, school board elections, college elections, came before the national elections so that we weren't on page 39 that's correct, of correct. the ballot. So is that something that's in discussion? That, that is in discussion. In fact, my understanding, I it's think done. you might have more information, it's done. Yeah, LA and County the, yeah, it, is the, the only county. The, the advantage to that is that it reduces the voter fatigue. Correct. You know, people are showing up to vote perhaps for the president. By the time they get to the end, they're just checking off or they're doing nothing. So I, I love that change. So local, local issues including uh, city issues, council members issues, and school board and community college would come first, followed by national issues after. Correct. Correct. So starting in March, you'll see that change, and then you'll see it in the general election November. Great. Thank you. Uh, further you. discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. The motion is approved unanimously. Resolution 091819-B, appointing members of the Asset Management Advisory Committee and identifying properties for the committee's consideration. Bring up Alan, Alan Rising. Thank you, uh, President Williams, board members. So today the item in front of you <coughs> is uh, the adoption of the, of the uh, from the board's consideration is the adoption of an asset advisory committee and we're gonna be identifying properties that the district currently owns that will be uh, uh, submitting to the committee for their consideration uh, for what the ultimate uh, disposition of that property would be. We currently have uh, two properties that are currently vacant. Uh, one of them is at 14, or uh, excuse me, 4310 Long Beach Boulevard. Uh, we, we affectionately call it the Willows Building. And we have another building at 999 Atlantic Boulevard. This is a building that was previously used for our uh, uh, personnel commission. And so those, those buildings are currently vacant and they're, they're really looking at it as surplus to our needs. Uh, according to Education Code 17388, the district is required to form a committee of various citizenry to uh, come in and advise the board, looking at various different metrics, including uh, student demographics and, and other, uh, other items, to ensure that the board uh, uh, truly doesn't need this property and provide a recommendation back to the board for the final uh, disposition of that property. At the same time, while we're doing that, we're also looking at other properties that the district currently owns, including the, this building that we're in today, to really look at if are there options in the real estate market for better locations for those properties. Uh, there have been concerns in the district that our board building is at the extreme edges of the, uh, of the district. Uh, it can sometimes be difficult for public to be able to access the building. And so we're merely asking the committee to look at it, to give the board some recommendations, and ultimately give the board the flexibility to look into the market to see if there are better locations for some of these properties uh, and to better serve our citizens, our citizens and our, our district. Uh, it's important to note that there's no obligations or no commitment to the district in this process. This is merely asking the committee to examine the district's metrics and provide a recommendation to the board that will allow us to then move forward with, uh, with exploring other properties in and around the district. I move approval. 
Second. Discussion? Just to follow up. Uh, sorry. Sure. Um, you're going to follow up on, on one of the uh, last things that you said, uh, Alan, but did you want to? Sure. I just wanted to open up the conversation. Um, so I appreciate that you said this doesn't obligate us to a certain course of action with any of the properties listed here. It, it allows us the opportunity to choose to dispose if that's what we agree is um, something that we want to pursue. And I would just encourage us to expand our horizons a bit as we look at some of these properties. And when we think of our mission as a district and what that entails, that sometimes it isn't just about, for me, education. So when we're looking at these properties, that there might be opportunities to partner with nonprofits or other agencies that might provide services that are of great benefit to our students. Um, so as we continue this conversation, um, working with this committee, that, we're, uh, that at some point we agendize a more robust conversation about the possibility of looking at working with an affordable housing nonprofit who may be able to provide us um, and provide the community with some much needed housing as a, in a time when we have declining enrollment. Um, and we know that affordability in the city is something that's impacting our enrollment. That if we have the opportunity to be a good partner and a good steward of that, that might be something that we want to consider. So um, I would hope that as we move forward with this committee that we have a really broad vision of what that might look like. Um, and it might be non-traditional, it might be a little bit outside of the box or where we've ever been. Um, but I would look forward to a really robust conversation around that. Alan, uh, who appoints members to this committee? Uh, the, the members were, were solicited, so uh, we posted applications around, around the district in various different a avenues to look for individuals that were uh, interested in serving in, in this capacity. It's voluntary. Uh, we actually have been soliciting for this position for more than a year, or just about a year, I guess, uh, in order to get uh, local individuals that are interested in serving in that. So ultimately, uh, that's the item in front of you is for the board to adopt uh, uh, these individuals as members of this committee. Thank you. Yeah, Alan, my, my question is directly, or my, yeah, my, my question is directly related to um, board member Kerr's comments. Is the purview of this committee just to consider these uh, pre-identified properties and potential uh, scenarios on what to do with them or are the only scenarios here to sell uh, and or relocate for the properties that are identified? So the purview of the committee will only be the properties that the board assigns to the committee to examine. Uh, it is within the board's purview to come back and add properties to that if, if that's what you, what you wish. But currently, according to this resolution, these properties are being put under the purview of the committee. Uh, asking them to come back with a recommendation on what would be the best and, and final use of that property. The, the board can adopt that recommendation or not, and the board does have some purview from there to decide what the final outcome would be. Okay. Uh, still not clear, uh, Alan. So clear on the, that these are the properties that they're considering? Yes. Not clear on are they only considering sell or relocation for these properties? No, no, they are, they are not. They, okay. they have the ability to consider uh, various different uh, scenarios back to okay. the board. Yes, okay. sell and or not sell is not the only option okay. they have. Okay, excellent. Further discussion? Um, I would just like clarification on two of the properties, the one on Atlantic and the one on Long Beach Boulevard. These are properties that are not currently used as school campuses and they wouldn't be, um, they would not be available to be used as school campuses. Yes, thank you. Both of these both properties uh, would not be eligible, would not be legal to be used as a school facility. They were not built according to the state building codes. Uh, these are both uh, business buildings that we've been able to acquire uh, over the years and use for other support services. So uh, even if the, the, the board were to decide to use these in other purposes, one, it could not be a school without a significant investment in a rebuilding program to bring them up to the current building code. Thank you. Additional discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Abstain? The motion is approved unanimously. Thank you. Uh, we are now at report of board members, starting with our student board member, Darlene. Good evening, everyone. 
My name is Darlene Tith, and, I ser uh, and I'm a current senior at Sato Academy of Math and Science and the ASB Student Council President for the 2020 school year. I'm excited to be here this evening to share with you the many great things about Sato. Back in June, we've concluded our 2018-2019 school year on a high note. The class of 2019, Sato's first graduating class, had 24 students commit to attend the College of Engineering at CSULB and 35 students total attending CSULB in various majors. From private schools to public schools, the class of 2019 did not leave without a plan and left underclassmen with an inspiration to achieve great things. This August, we'd entered our fifth year with a brand new science building, a new class of ambitious students, and some pretty great news. Our current seniors started this year with high SBAC growth and achievement for both ELA and math at the top of all high schools in the district. This was a great way to start off the year as this was our second time achieving this in the two years that we've taken the SBAC. We are excited to see what is in store for us and are just getting started. Last year's construction has also come to a close and we are finally moved into our latest campus addition. The, late, the new science building holds 16 new classrooms with state-of-the-art audio art video, <laughs> state-of-the-art audio-visual technology, including surround sound and microphone capabilities, and not to mention air conditioning. <laughs> Those on campus are ecstatic to use a lot, utilize the new classrooms and expand upon our biomedical and engineering pathways. Engineering students now have the space to work on various projects and explore the field in our new manufacturing and design labs. Biomedical students are ecstatic to work in the new laboratory space for experience and experiments and various projects. The students and staff have enjoyed working in the new buildings and have adapted to our improved campus. The new building provides us with an enriching environment to inspire the next generation of engineers and health professionals. As a senior this year, I've been able to witness the progression of our school over the years and it's been really fun to watch how our school culture has slowly come together and with every new class. As of now, our school culture has started to shape to really take shape. Since our first year of senior activities um, last year, students now look forward to a lot more as they come along towards their graduation. There seems to be this fresh new vision, feeling of ambition and curiosity on campus cultivated by the students. Each aspect of our school is always growing and, um, and our ASB is tirelessly working to establish traditions and add on to our, ident our school identity. This year we plan on starting more events in hope of becoming traditions and um, encouraging our clubs to grow and expand and work with uh, more students. Uh, I'm sure that Sato Academy will not only be known for academics in the future, but for a unique and accepting school culture also. It's a great responsibility to be given such opportunities at our school. I, along with my classmates, have been able to reach new heights that we have, may not have been able to at another school We've learned skills and traits to be a successful student and a lifelong learner. We've gained hands-on experience in our respective career fields. And most importantly, we've learned how to make our mistakes into lessons and use them to grow our knowledge. With every new school year comes new challenges and lessons, but it's nothing us dragons can't handle. We're excited to see what's in store for us and can't wait to share experiences in the end. Thank you. Darling, thank you for that very excellent presentation. But we have a few questions that we want to ask beyond that. And what are your plans, uh, if you can share with us, uh, for college and major and all that good stuff? Uh, for college, I hope to be going to um, UCSD and hopefully studying biology in a pre-med track. Yeah. Okay. And I, I don't ever recall a graduation uh, ceremony where all five board members were there representing uh, Long Beach Unified School District. It was very special. And uh, for the be part of the first graduating class, it was extra special. So I know you folks have a lot to be proud of there. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Very much. Ms. Kerr. Yes. Um, does your friend have a name there next to you? Oh, this is um, Dragon Ciso. He's, our, he's my AP government teacher's class pet. So we get to take him on stage when she was in school. So you should take a picture. It's like the little flat Stanley guy. So take a picture make sure everybody knows he was here. Um, thank you, Dr. Williams. I just want to thank the teachers and staff and the families for a tremendous back to school night at many of our elementary schools last night. Um, I know lots of folks attended because parking at some of our schools was a little tight. So um, 
but I saw happy parents and kids playing on the playground and uh, teachers really engaged with families last night. So thank you to those uh, schools, uh, McKinley and Hart especially, that I got to visit and um, spend some time with um, Longfellow as well. So thank you to everyone who worked so hard to make our families feel welcome in these first couple of weeks of school. Um, I think that would, that's it for me. Thank you so much. Dr. Benitez, before you start, uh, you know, something we don't normally do with our student board members, but is it possible that we can get a group photo with her be, yeah. as part of this? Okay, Dr. Benitez. Absolutely. Very similar to board member Kerr's uh, comments, I think one of my favorite things um, has been to be able to observe our uh, parents and families and students engaging with our teachers and staff uh, during back to school nights. So cool, in fact, that I think it would be much cooler to have a school board meeting uh, in our neighborhood schools. Uh, for the same reasons that Alan actually uh, highlighted the consideration of relocating our uh, offices uh, here um, and you know provide us an opportunity to uh, be in the communities where our teachers and staff and students and parents uh, are engaging. Uh, so um, in total agreement, uh, board member uh, Kerr, that it is super cool, particularly at the beginning of the year, uh, to uh, see clearly uh, parents and teachers engaging as allies, co-educators, uh, authentic, genuine partners in our uh, students' educational endeavors. So congratulations to, to everyone for for putting those wonderful opportunities together. And then props to all uh, the um, families and community members and students and parents that uh, took the time uh, to come uh, hang out at uh, our schools. Thank you, Dr. Benitez. Mrs. Craig. Um, <clears throat> yes, I've been paying attention. I was just not uh, ready to go next. Okay, um, since we're talking about back to school night, I, I agree, it's fabulous to see all the um, you know, families and, and parents come out and be engaged in their um, students' education. For me, I really enjoy seeing our administrators at work because at a lot of the back to school nights, there was a presentation by the principal before the parents go and visit the classrooms. And because the schedule had um, different times, I was able to visit a couple of different schools and experience those presentations by the principals and it seems to me that even if you have a principal who personally might be a little um, I don't want to say shy too much but maybe a little bit more quiet when they are passionate about what they do when they're um, excited about the kids all of a sudden they tap into this energy that is just electric and um, and it's, it's, it's energizing. And so it's very fun to go from school to school and see this in action to, to really experience that. Um, in one of the um, hallways, I believe it was at, at Cleveland, there was a, a display and it was a, a, a big banner and it had wings and it said, you already have the wings, you just need to fly. And I thought that was really wonderful. I like that message because it, it's saying to the kids, you already have what you need. You just need, how, you just need to learn how to use it. And I thought that was a great message. And then um, at Gompers, they have a green program, and their program is a little bit different. Um, the G stands for grit, the R for responsibility, E for expectations, the other E for ethics, and N for neighborly. And it reminds kids of the values of that school and what they need to keep in mind and work on. So I would just say that it was a big success. Um, also, I did want to report on another event that took place this week. It was the President's and Principals meeting for Long Beach Council PTA. And that was attended by, I would say, a good number of our PTA presidents, representatives. We have PTAs in 43 schools in our school district. We had executive staff there. Um, we had a presentation by our superintendent. I know as a PTA volunteer, it's always nice to have support 
from the school district. And when you have the superintendent that takes time to um, address the PTA presidents and other people who step up and volunteer, it, it shows a special commitment. And when you have executive staff that takes time out of their schedule to be there and learn about how we can work together as a parent volunteer group and, and you know working with our principals in the schools, it says a lot about our district and I'm happy to be a part of all that. So just you know, thank you for all of those people that volunteer that continue to do that. And I know Ms. Kerr at a um, previous board meeting you talked about joining your local PTA. So I encourage everybody to do that. Um, and I, that's my report. Thank you, Diana. Mr. Meyer. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll ditto what my fellow board members have said about thanking our staff. Um, you know, you walk into a second grade, second grade classroom and you see the challenges that a teacher has to enrich their reading ability, their math ability, their sociability. It's a real challenge. Let's go to the high school. Let's take uh, uh, an English teacher with 175 student contacts a day. And if that teacher spends 10 minutes outside of school reading or evaluating the writing of each student, that's about 30 additional hours a week outside of the classroom. That's just 10 minutes per student. And many of our teachers spend much more time than that. So thank you, teachers, for all you do. It's an arduous task, but one that is deeply rewarding. Thank you so much. And thank you all, all the board members, uh, for uh, uh, highlighting the hard work and difficult work that goes on in this district each and every day. And some of it is so seamless that, you know, when you talk about 72,000 students moving through our classrooms uh, and the... Um, the sometimes what seems to be a, a just a, a procedure, it's amazing that we get so much done with so many active uh, minds and bodies. And uh, it really, it just, uh, I think, clarifies what this district is all about, the amount of work that goes on in this district to do the kinds of things we do. And uh, to all of our folks who make this happen, uh, you're all very special, very, very special. Um, let me move on to superintendent's report. Just quickly, I'd um, like to share with Darlene, I had the opportunity to see Mrs. Saddle's daughter uh, in August, and she made a special book that she presented to the principal, and she gave one to me, and her mother is 98 years old, and she is so proud of what you folks have done at the school. She wanted us to let you know that, so she... Uh, had her picture taken, she actually went out to the marquee and had her picture taken by the marquee. And um, uh, if, for those who, have, who know Mrs. Uh, Sato, she's a wonderful person who, who believed in, in our young people and still does. And so she's your number one cheerleader up in Bixby Knowles. Thank you, Chris. We are now at announcements. I, I have two. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give a shout out to Mike Artabascio and Tyler Hendrickson for a Fresh off the press, the history of Long Beach Poly Scholars and Champions. Uh, I just got it delivered to my house the other day. You can still order it online, but they will be having events at Long Beach Poly. This is a tremendous undertaking that they've been working on for about four or five years um, to really look at the significance of poly in the, the history of our city and the history of our community. So I highly, highly recommend that you get a copy. I know there'll be an event at Poly at some point and they will be at football games as well if you'd back like and back to school night at the high school uh, which is in October mm -hmm. I don't know the date off the top of my head um, but congratulations uh, to Mike and Tyler for uh, tremendous work I've only scratched the surface the forward is by our very own alumnus Billie Jean King which leads to my second announcement which is this Saturday at 9 30 a.m. Uh, the new Billie Jean King main library will be dedicated and open um, she will be there herself to make some remarks and, I, and lots of family activities, face painting, food, the whole nine yards. So bring the family out 930 to that beautiful new library down on Broadway. Thank you very much. Well, Megan, do we not have a, uh, a dedication also at Oropesa uh, Thursday morning? Is that not um, so? I think it's Friday. Is it Friday, Friday morning? 
Friday. Yeah, uh, okay. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you, John. Mm -hmm. Very quickly, um, just, just in, uh, the Children's Clinic is having their, uh, their uh, beach walk. Is that a beach walk? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, on Saturday, September 28th at Shoreline Aquatic Park in Long Beach. And folks need to know how much uh, the Children's Clinic contributes to uh, this district uh, in terms of their facilities on our campuses, uh, providing uh, uh, health services for our students. And when you, when you bring it all together, the fact that our kids are able to get the health services they need means that we're able to put these kids in the classroom. So uh, it's very important that we continue to support the, the Children's Clinic and uh, the work that they do for our district. I also understand that they're having a fundraiser on Sunday, October 13th at MOLA. Uh, so uh, please tell Dr. Nicholas that I did my part. Mm -hmm. Okay. Dr. Williams, just to add on the beach walk, so the Celebrando Families, Celebrating Families Festival is immediately following the Thank beach walk. Thank you, Juan. Uh, Thank you very the, much uh, for that. At, a, at the Shoreline Aquatic Park. Thank you very much for mm -hmm. that. Any other uh, announcements? Then I, I want to close this meeting in memory of Matt, Matthew Jenkins, and just let me say a few words about Matt. Uh, Matt uh, passed away last week uh, after uh, a bit of an illness, um, but he has done so much in this city and beyond. Uh, I can recall his work up at Claremont uh, Graduate University where he served on their board of governors and made substantial financial contributions to that college for the benefit of students who were un unable to pay. Similarly, he did the same thing at Cal State University, Long Beach, over a number of years. And more recently, uh, with the Math Collaborative, along with his wife, Roberta Jenkins, uh, Matt began his career as a veterinarian, uh, 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 receiving his degree in veterinarian science, and practiced uh, for many years in that trade. But the most remarkable thing about him is that he was always willing to give advice to anyone who would listen. And sometimes it came with a little sharp edge, but he was right there to make sure that uh, he supported you hook, line, and sinker, uh, an exceptional human being. Uh, so if we can close this, this meeting tonight in recognition of, of Matt Jenkins. Thank you. Entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.